So one of the last episodes, we were south of LA along the beaches that span out below Long Beach. Sunset Seals Beach, Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, down to San Clemente and San Onofre and the uh, new beach down there that's uh, actually on the uh, Marine Base Camp Pendleton stretch of beach just below the state beach or city beach for San Onofre, San Onofre, right near the San Onofre nuclear power plants. After that, run down to the southern beaches of Los Angeles area. I went back downtown for a while and ate good at the missions and soup lines, which they have more of in the downtown area. So after that break at the uh, missions downtown, I decided, well, let's see what the beaches north along the Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, what the beaches north of the San Monica in that area were like. Found that Malibu is kind of right there, one of the main beaches north of Santa Monica. I think there's a little state beach, Will Rogers Beach, but that wasn't a whole lot there. But when you got up to Malibu, I'd already discovered that a lot of the beaches there along that area are private and people don't like you walking up their beach. So just as well to take the uh, coastal highway there. I've heard also beyond Malibu Beach about another nude beach being further up the coast at what they call Point Dune and I want to say they called it Pirate's Cove because it's a little cove the way that the coastline is from Santa Monica Beach let's see, inland's that way from what y'all are looking at to come from Los Angeles downtown and go out to the Santa Monica Beach area. And um, you go north and there's a little point that sticks out, which is Point Dune. But right in the point is a little cove. And it's got a rocky ridge that runs down one side, a rocky ridge that runs down the other side of the little beach there. So it's kind of cupped in a little cove. And that's part of why it's so... Uh, I guess why sometimes it's a new beach, it's so private, it's hard to get to it, and uh, not many people go down to there anyway. And if you go there, I think you have to go across a lot of rocky ridges and do a little bit of climbing to get over the ridge onto the beach at the where the point where the where the point dune is. And so I went ahead and walked it went over to visit it, but, you know, if you've seen one new beach, it's almost all the same. And I don't know, I was tired, I've done a lot of walking. I spent a little bit of time there, but not much. And uh, was kind of also anxious about going on further north along the coast there. I read about, or seen on the map, where there's a little beach called Zuma Beach, Z-U-M-A, Zuma Beach. And a long story behind it all, back in the 80s, I guess it was the late 70s, early 80s, there'd been a TV show um, called Three's Company. And uh, Suzanne Summers was a star, one of the stars, three main actors, actors, uh, John Ritter, Joyce DeWitt and Suzanne Summers were the main three characters, people, actors in that uh, sitcom. And I had a little bit of a crush, admiration for Suzanne Summers. And I'd seen where she was also in a movie called Zuma Beach. And presumably it was a story that took place along that beach, kind of a high school, and kind of her character was an older character, kind of revisiting the places that she would hang out in high school and romance like a typical kind of beach movie having a little romance built in I forget the main story it seemed like they had some kind of fund to raise to save the high school or save the B 
beach or something from turning into a resort. I'm not sure exactly the specifics, but it was it was kind of fun, but just you know your typical kind of beach movie. So anyway, I had the memory of that movie, and uh, Suzanne Summers in my mind, thinking, well, this is going to be that beach. This is going to be Zuma Beach. And so I kind of hurried on past the uh, nude beach at uh, Point Dune there. And that next stretch of beach along the coast is Zuma Beach. And I believe it must be fairly close to a high school there. At least my experience when I was there was that almost every day there would be a large crowd of young people a lot of them, I guess, teenage boys and girls. And, and for that matter, most of these did not seem to be escorted or along with families and groups with older adults. So it kind of made me think that probably there was a high school not far from there that they could all go out from the high school and go swimming and on the beach. It'd be a nice thing if that were true. That's important because it builds into what kind of happened there. Uh, I'd already told you about at least coming to the crossroad of deciding whether I'd eat trash or eat things that were in the trash and I'd already kind of discovered that you can find food that's relatively edible, that's not bad, that's you know healthy enough for you to eat and to live off of in the trash. In our American society we're throw away enough civilization that Oft times we discard something just because we don't want to eat it. So it's just thrown away. Not that it's bad or un inedible, just we don't want to eat it, so we just throw it away. And that happens relatively common. So if you are out there on the street and you've got nothing better to do, no other way to get food than to look through certain specific trash cans, you got to get smart about it because some of them are really awful and nasty and you don't want them bother and really you shouldn't be doing this unless it is your last resort but if you only had that to live off of you could probably find some resources that way and live I don't recommend anybody do that unless you are in a situation where you kind of have to or, or you make that decision you have to make that decision that's your decision to make you know what mine was you know what my answer was <laughs> I ate it Anyway, um, so I'd already gotten past that point, being squeamish or worrying about it, kind of had already thought it out in my mind that most of the trash that's in the trash cans, not more than a day old anyway, along all the beaches, they thoroughly keep them clean and, and empty the trash cans on a regular basis. I'd say probably daily or if not emptied once a day, at least once every two or three days, certainly no more than maybe a half week. So the food in the cans hasn't gotten hasn't gotten particularly old or wet or starting to rot in that kind of way or been taken advantage of by insects, which they have some insects everywhere has some insects just about everywhere. So when I was coming up to Zuma Beach, I didn't know how I would survive. I knew I'd be fairly far. It's further from downtown uh, than some of the other beaches that I go to, probably about. 20 or more miles further from downtown. So I knew I was taking a little bit of a chance on the food issue situation, but I thought surely they'd have a Salvation Army or something that, you know, I could get a few meals out of. And then if it got that bad, I'd just come back south again and go back to downtown Los Angeles. But I guess I didn't think about it either, really. I just kind of wanted to go and see what it was like. And I guess I thought it would only be a day trip or a couple of days and I could get back in time. It wouldn't be so bad. First day getting there, I don't remember exactly that I took a nap, but likely as not I did. And then probably by about midday or afternoon, I noticed the kids coming down, a lot of the teenagers and whatnot, and they were all like, you know, running around and pointing and laughing and playing and stuff like they would. And, checking each other out and who's going with who and that whole thing. You can kind of predict certain little social scenes, things that were going on, kind of figure out if they're like kids most anywhere and have all the little different dramas going on. 